Can I just go back to the present? <laughs> these flash, all these flashbacks in this game make me just want to die. Because <laughs> then I feel so bad. The depression settles in. But it's fine. Then we go back to the present. Everything's dandy. It's all good. Until, we, you know. Yeah, yeah, eat. Yeah, yeah. I'm here in it now. I'm here in it now. You haven't seen nothing yet. Just wait till you get back to it and you die. I already know. I've, I've seen that comment five billion times. A fine spring day just before the rainy season. The sky above was remarkably beautiful. Putting down my brush, I stretched out and muttered a few words to no one in particular. You hear that? Her life is coming back? <laughs> like, as in, in her voice? <laughs> Recently, I've been getting so absorbed in my art that it was easy to forget time. The, there'd been a few incidents where I'd kept the, my car waiting long enough to cause some anxiety, so I started making a conscious effort to check my watch frequently. I examined my sketchbook instead of the sky that I'd been so devoted for so long. Today, I had painted the rooftop flower bed. After months of obsessively obsessively sketching the clouds the change had taken me by surprise for a while i just gazed down at that image various emotions running through me <laughs> get your bass in the car i hurriedly gathered up my painting materials and pushed them into my bag as it turned out i was a little slow coming home that after all well my life rapidly changed after my father's apology the dinners together that had once been so painful were now something I looked forward to. I talked to him about many things. My art formerly sketches of the sky in black pencil had become increasingly colorful with works accentuated with brushes, paintbrushes. Even my school life was shifting ever so slightly for the better. Hey! <laughs> A girl who stood out even amongst the young ladies in our class, uh, Ida Kanako, had begun to approach me on a regular basis. Well, you came to the right lady, because we are smart as a fuck. We'd struck up a conversation about our work in our class one day, and had been taken like t taken like this pretty frequently ever since. Did I say taking? I meant talking. Whatever. She wasn't quite a friend yet, <laughs> but up until then, I'd almost had no actual conversations in school with anyone but teachers. By my standards, it was an enormous step forward. <laughs> well, thanks. <laughs> I, we are pretty smart. <laughs> <laughs> I maybe if teachers got paid more. <laughs> uh, why is it? Oh, it's doing that again. God damn it. Hello, father. See, she look at how happy she sounds. I'm waiting till that dies. I'm waiting for it, man. Something's gonna happen because, you know, clearly this is the past and. She's not on good terms with her fucking dad anymore, so I just, we just gotta, gotta see what happens. Dad was still an incredibly busy man. Nonetheless, he would always come home at least a few times every week to have dinner with me. I used to only see his face during the meal itself, but recently I'd started greeting him at the door with a, na a natural smile on my face. Oh. <laughs> Listen, look at him. He's actually listening. Uh, uh, oh, stop. Just say you're friends. Previously, my father had talked and talked and talked and talked and talked while I only had brief responses, but the situation was largely, re largely reversed. I told Dad about everything. Every trivial little thing in my life. No matter how the to what the topic, he never failed to hear me out with a smile. That made me happy. Nah, Yumiko. 
ミサコが治ったら3人で海外旅行にでも行くか So, yeah, he, so he's still thinking about the, the mom. Okay. So, he's still thinking about 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 the mom. そんなのいつだっていけるだろう。Yeah, but not with family. <laughs> うん、そこがいいの。See? See? My father looked mystified. Still, I stuck to my guns. When I was very small and very lonely, the idea of, me, of, of a family visit to an amusement park had enchanted me. I was well past the age to begging for a trip like that, but that secret yearning had never really gone away. So, I understand. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. The whole place? I don't know how I'd feel about that. I've always thought about, oh, what if we had the whole amusement park to ourselves? But it feels so lonely without everyone else, right? <laughs> うん、そんなのじゃなくていい普通にでいいから<笑>ユミコはいつも控えめだな、oh, ユミコユミコアイスコールユミコアイスコールユミコアイスコールユミコユミコアイスコールユミコアイスコールユミコアイスコールユミコアイスコールユミコアイスコールユミコアイ God damn it, I wish I had my new microphone so I can whisper into it better, like, and give you all super ASMR. Dad spoke those words with a smile. <clears throat> it was the first time I'd ask him for anything. Even as my days became happier, I'd been careful not to say anything greedy, anything about the things I wanted. I suppose I couldn't quite believe that tranquil life was real. If I asked too much of the dream, I'm afraid it would have just fallen apart underneath me. Ah, oh, she's writing in the things. In that half year, the size of my diary entries had increased exponentially. When I used to write about, right, nothing happened again and again, ripping off the bottom of the page for scrap paper. Now I was often running out of space before I could even cover everything. And in the center of my room, a canvas stood on an easel, surrounded by a colorful array of art supplies, all things I'd purchased and used frequently. <sighs> Will something happen again? Yes! <laughs> Will it fall apart in the blink of an eye? Probably, yes! Everything was so peaceful that at times it made me uneasy. Come to think of it, those few days before my mother was scheduled to leave the hospital had felt very much the same. I don't like it. I, oh, oh, hello? I'm quite sure I scribbled those words at the end of my diary entry. It was this one small wish I would allow myself. Ugh. Something's gonna happen. Here it fucking comes. Here it fucking comes. Yeah, here it fucking comes. The raining season. <laughs> the rainy season had come and gone. Summer vacation was fast approaching. It pro approaching. Fucking goddamn it, my. St it was a day like n any other. <laughs> Reading on the internet that the weather would be taking a turn for the worse in the afternoon. Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> I called off my usual rooftop painting session and went home a little early. Can I stop here? Can I stop here? Can I stop here? I still have a little bit of time. Do you really? Why? I'm a little bit of a feeling today. They said it would be raining in the evening, but for the moment it was clear and pleasant. Uh, it was clear and pleasant summer afternoon. Therefore, I got out of the car halfway and walked the remaining kilometer or so home. There wasn't really any reason for that. It was just a whim, realistically, here. 
Oh no, the fucking music here comes. When I opened the front door and slipped inside, I found the entrance hall empty and the servants, who were usually there, there to greet me. It was probably because I'd returned so suddenly. Even when I closed the door behind me, the hallway remained silent. Here it comes. Something bad's happening. <laughs> Not that it really bothered me anyway. I began to move toward the stairs. Son of a... Son of a bitch! But a voice from, a, from deeper in the hallway stopped me in my tracks. If that woman hadn't spe to st happened to speak ha hadn't happened to speak my name at that very moment, without a doubt, I would have shrugged, uh, gone up the stairs to my room, and stayed completely oblivious. And they're fucking skeeving. I slowly inch my way down the passage, careful not to make a sound, and stop just before a corner. From the other side, I could hear the three employees who, us who usually meet me at the door talking about something. <sighs> Oh, son of a bitch. We all knew it was too good to be true, man. I told we all knew. Wow. Wow! God damn it. So Narabai. They were speaking quietly, but I can make out their conversation clearly enough. <laughs> I shouldn't be listening to this. My throbbing heart was making that very clear. But my feet wouldn't budge, and my ears were intent on capturing every word of their discussions. <sighs> yeah, we figured that was the case. Oh, I figured that was the case. I was just like, why would he care now? Well, you know what I mean? Like, why would he... After years, now he's just like, oh, I care now. There's clearly an ulterior motive, and there you go. <laughs> there you go. And the kid fight. So she did, in fact, do that. Uh, we, I mean, like this, this, like, other than him talking, it's all confirmed. Uh, what? <laughs> my body had begun to tremble. It was part part of the story I'd almost pushed out of my mind. But that mistress and the boy she'd supposedly given birth to. Stray fucking died? Too. Jesus Christ. I'd always thought it was strange. Why had dad called me for me when he did? Mm-hmm. Why suddenly approach a daughter you'd toss aside once before? Uh-huh. I thought that attention was his way of atoning for my mother's suffering. It's fucked up. I thought that that was his attempt at finally becoming a father to me. I mean... At the very least, maybe this is just, you know, co-workers being co-workers and shooting a shit and talking, about, like, shit-talking, pretty much. But I don't, I don't think that's the case. No, I simply convinced myself it had to be that way. Deep down, I knew all along that it couldn't possibly have been true. <laughs> 
Yeah, I'm right here, bitch. Get, get on my level. ちょっと前まで<笑> Dude, these servants are like fucked up. Hi, hi. Hope they die. <laughs> Jesus. With that languid response, the group dispersed. Even long after the footsteps faded away, I stood there in silence, perfectly still. An idle question occurred to me. What sort of an expression do I have on my face right now? What sort of expression do people make at times like these? I felt oddly detached from reality, as though watching a movie projected before my eyes on some hidden camera. Eventually, I took another step, then another. I dragged myself up the stairs on legs that didn't quite feel like my own. Yeah. They said it would be raining in the evening, but it was a clear and pleasant summer afternoon. Therefore, I got out of the car halfway and walked the remaining kilometer or so home. There wasn't any real reason for that. There wasn't any reason at all. And so, I could only curse God. <laughs> I reached my room. It was far too quiet inside. I'd almost begun to forget how painful the absence of sound could be. I'd almost begun to find the silence comfortable. So if we were to take the servants what they said at face value, he's just, you know putting on a face and using us, manipulating us to... God damn it, I hate it. Uh... Uh... You heard the knife sound? Oh! Scraps of notebook paper danced around to me. Fragments of the word dad, fragments of the word happy, fragments of silent sentences highlighted in bright colors. A half year preserved in joyful words scattered through the air. The upper half of my painting was thick with dabs of blue and yellow paint. That was the first part to go. With a harsh rip, the cloth tore away from one of the screws holding it in place and... As the canvas hurled it on itself, white paint fell to the ground like a dusting of snow. You get it. In the lightless room, white, blue, and yellow flew about. Scattered, shattered, and torn, powerless, and broken, they melted one by one into the darkness. Oh, this is here. It's going to get even worse. Here we go. Unable to think, unable to act, I endured the night. The time for it came for me to wake up, acting on pure reflexive habit, I stood up on unsteady feet and made my preparations. Pathetically enough, there was still a part of me holding on to hope. The house was no longer a refuge, but I'd begun to make a small place for myself at school. I could just make more friends, find people to talk to. Maybe that would be enough. Maybe that would be something. Uh, I caught a glimpse of the face I was looking for from the hallway. Ida-san might be willing. If I kept talking to her, little by little, she might become my friend. This, so that. Wait, is everyone talking shit? <laughs> Ida-san seemed to be talking to somebody. I peered in through the window. She was sitting at the very center of a group of girls. I just had to talk to her later when she was alone. Sakaki-san, te, mekake no ko nan da te, otou-sama ga. What? What? The child of a mistress? <laughs> Filthy words. Those sort of words that almost never left that girl's mouth. The, dude, these bitches! God fucking... Can we nuke them from orbit? It's the only way to be sure. We'll, get, we'll save Sakaki, but that's about it. Well, <laughs> the shameful... <laughs> the same shameful words they'd printed in the magazine that changed everything. <laughs> She's also just putting on a fucking face. 
そんな子だったらなおさら無視しておけばだってそうしたらもっと興味深い話が聞けるかもしれないじゃないどうやって榊の家に母親が取り入ったのかとかそれでね We can, we can right now? These fucking bitches? This. I'm like just getting mad. Let's, that's all this flashback has done is getting me salty and mad <laughs> about how shitty people really are. How people really are. And, I mean, I already knew that. I hate everybody, anyways. <laughs> For some reason, I thought of fruit. Ah, hanging from a tree. As it at first it ripens and swells on the end of its branch, beautiful and tempting, but in time its coloration grows impure and unattractive. Its point of connection of the tree begins to creak from the strain. One thread of fiber snaps, and another, the thin line holding it to life and nourishment grows thinner and thinner. <sighs> Ooh, I don't like the sound of that. Oh. I entered the classroom. The girls had, who'd been snickering about me until a moment before innocently looked away and moved on to another topic of conversation. Huh. Fuck all y'all. <laughs> you all can just die. A few moments after dropping my bag on my desk, I slowly began to walk in their direction. I felt every movement of my feet with a brilliant, eerie clarity. What? A, wait, she's... What, hold on, did I read that right? She's fucking... Yeah, she's walking in there. She's walking towards them. I don't know how I feel about that. This might be what it's like to take the last few steps toward the summit of a mountain. The cl a climber has the thrill of achieving something, but in the, de the, the determination, the clear-minded acceptance of fate, there might be something similar, or so I thought, a spectator of my own actions. I don't know. Do I got the box cutter? Can I just hurl it at her? <laughs> No, we can't do that. No, let's not. Let's... That would cause so much trouble. <laughs> yeah. Ida Kaneko turned to face me with a usual placid smile. Get out of here. I had already decided what would happen next. Familiar feelings swelled inside me. The same as when I cut my hair. My di Don't even tell me. My diary. My canvas. <sighs> I was... Ch Game! Can we talk real quick? I was joking. You know, haha, <laughs> making a funny. I don't want to throw the knife at her. Please. Because <laughs> th this <laughs> familiar feeling swelled inside me. The same was cutting the hair, the diary, the canvas, cutting, stabbing, box cutter. <laughs> Please don't. What's <laughs> Oh boy, don't don't do it. I swear to God, Yumiko, I <laughs> Ida Kanako's hand reached out to me. She's just gonna fucking <laughs> To my eyes, it looked like the grasping claw of a corpse pulling me down to hell. Oh I understood it all along. I'd simply kept myself from noticing. There was never any place of refuge here. I'd force myself to believe in lies because I couldn't keep on go going without them. But I'd finally found another way to live. Oh! <laughs> Ooh! She did it! She started stabbing! <laughs> Game, I was kidding! I didn't want you to actually start cutting a person! <laughs> You know what it, what this implies? We just we just fucking slashed at her with a f f or I assume her hand <laughs> with a fucking box cutter at school. <laughs> People are gonna think we're crazy. I mean, s slightly, but not like at I watched her serenely as the blood spurted out. <laughs> For a moment, she couldn't even process what had happened. For just a moment, she stared down blankly at her hand. And her palm dyed in red. <laughs> yep, sounds about right. Ida Conico collapsed in, a, in slow motion. Desk clattered all around. The others backed away as if distancing themselves from a live bomb. Get back here! I'm stabbing the rest of you! <laughs> Might as well fucking go all the way to serial killer. <laughs> this 
This is what happens when you're shit on your whole life. Finally get happiness and then realize you're getting shit on again. If you call that teacher, I'm stabbing you too. Get out of here. Oh, it's... Oh. My God. That's right. I should have cut it all apart. Are we realizing what we just did? I should have just shut out my brain and cut my way to freedom. <laughs> Cut my way to freedom. Oh, this is sad. I was grinding my teeth as hard as I could. There were tears streaming down my face. But all things considered, I didn't feel particularly sad. Much the opposite. Since the blade had finally severed me from the lies, I was filled with the strange sense of relief. It felt as though a wide, shining road forward had been revealed to me. Someone tell me that it's... I, 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 I can't remember what the what the box cutter looked like off the top of my head, but is this the same box cutter that she has now, like in the present? Someone tell me that at least. Eh, it'll probably tell me later, or if I pay attention, I'll be able to see it, if it is the same one or not. Back to the corpse, Yumiko, who feels nothing. I shouldn't have, shouldn't have hoped for a happy ending in this little place. Everything was scripted from the start. And the actress had passively accepted her role, dreaming of a heartwarming conclusion to the black comedy that had been written for her. <laughs> ah, so this is the character archetype that they haven't shown yet. Crazy! <laughs> At some point I began to laugh. The tears were still rolling down my cheeks, but there was no sadness anymore. I'd left most of that all behind on the day my mother broke, and the rest of the uh, rest on the day my father betrayed me. I'd depleted my stock of sorrow. You know what, Yumiko? You're totally fine. Just do what you need to be do, do what needs to be done. <laughs> Just get it all out. Stab a few people. I'm sure your dad can fucking work something out to get you out getting in trouble it'll be fine <laughs> just how much of a clown do I need to be just how pathetic do I need to become what do I need to do to satisfy my cowering audience to please the god who wrote this play their eyes watched me from what felt like an enormous distance pushing me lower and lower into the dirt <laughs> No, it's the more you laugh, the more unsettling I'm getting. Unsettled I'm getting. Ooh, I brandished the open box cutter in my right hand toward the back of the classroom. Incoherent little shrieks from my classmates were the only response. A few girls had already broken into tears. She just gonna start like cutting everybody? Uh. Uh, uh oh. I laughed in their place. Even when the teachers who came running pinned me down, I stabbed them too. Even when they carried me out of the classroom like some sort of terrorist. You st attacked a person with a box cutter! Wouldn't it be odder not to laugh at something so utterly ridiculous? When they took me away, I noticed my desk standing isolated in the chaos. I felt a twinge of pity at leaving it behind. Until the very end, I could never see the person who supposedly sat there. Oh, boy. Oh. My father acted swiftly once he was notified. A settlement was reached with the Ida family. The incident was erased without so much as a disciplinary hearing. Yup, figured as much. Thanks, Dad. At first, my father tried to coax me out of my locked room with gentle words, but I refused to acknowledge its existence. After two months of that siege, I was for half forced out, loaded unceremoniously into a car, and brought to a town where the air smelt of seawater. Oh. Uh-huh. I understood what sort of place it was the moment I saw the high wall surrounding it. It was a housing facility. A pleasant little cage where I could be safely stowed away without the risk of causing further trouble. A woman who introduced herself as the principal introduced me to the school with a slightly fearful expression on her face. <laughs> she brought me into the, an empty dormitory and told me it would be my new home. When I checked my bank book I'd been handed on the way over, I found a rather excessive amount of pocket money in my account. 
from the day I began to wear an exceptionally flashy school uniform and commute to Mahama Academy, I haven't been face to face with my father even once. Are we coming back? Coming back? Nope, never mind. No, we're not coming back. We're never coming back. We're stuck in this place. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> the personality starts off as something like a cube. When we're, they, we're young, we clumsily bump our corners against other people in the form of childish conflicts. Eventually, our sharp edges are worn away to leave something more like a sphere. That's more or less what people are describing when they say someone soft it's softened. Moderate collisions with others help us mature. But when those first impacts are too strong, they can have a different effect. Instead of losing our corners little by little, we splinter in harsh, strange, harsh ways, warped into crooked shapes. Once crooked, it's hard to become a sphere. Even as the people around them mellow, their sharpness only grows harsher, and everyone who approaches ends up getting hurt. But even the most warped human beings started the same as everyone else. Sometimes they look back on the past and grieve. Sometimes they wonder if it's not too late to reshape themselves. And because they know that's an empty dream, they grieve once again. Skaki Yumiko is one of many such sad, distorted objects. Feels real bad. The rain, which I'd taken for a passing shower, continued long after the thunder passed away. By the time we leave our cover in the lingering drizzle, the sun's already set. We're back, but it's all sad. <laughs> In a change from the usual routine, I hurry down the road home with an arm wrapped around Sakaki, who stumbles along unsteadily by at my side. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> the rain's very weak by now, but the constant dampness has left her body noticeably chilled, and at that moment her emotional state is a bit of a concern as well. I lean closely over Sakaki as we walk, sheltering her from the rain as best I can. That relatively brief journey back to the dorm feels awfully long right now. It's so weird to be back after seeing the stabbing and the laughing and the gliving! No, she's, she's totally fine. Don't worry about it. Omne yelps in surprise the instant she lays eyes on us. Was it that much of a shock to see me holding Skaki by the shoulder? Well, considering the girl's normal personality, I suppose it's only reasonable to jump straight into assuming something's physically wrong with her. We just got caught up in a downpour, that's all. We sheltered from the rain for a while. That's <laughs> Her physical condition aside, Skaki seems badly drained in spirit. That uncharacteristic weakness from before is still plainly evident in her tone of voice. Well, at least now we know why the way she is. Uh. Appreciate it. I'm making a note. Once I'm old and gray, I'm going to write, Amine oh, was like a mother to us all in my memoirs. What's wrong with that? I'm pretty sure you I'm pretty sure in twenty years you're gonna look just as beautiful. Saying <laughs> As soon as I got Skaki to her room, she claps into her bed. Normally she would have ejected me to change out of her wet clothes, but she currently was lacking any sort of energy or willpower to bother. Damn, she fell asleep instantly? <laughs> yeah. In her wet clothes, no less. The hot orange and honey drink Kamine provided seemed to calm Sakaki down. It didn't take long at all for her to nod off. 
I think she's got a slight fever as well. We were in and out of the rain after all. Lightly holding her hand to Skagi's forehead, Amine nods in agreement. Skagi doesn't seem to be in any real discomfort, but I can tell that she's breathing a little roughly. In any case, thanks for the help, Amine. I'm going to keep an eye on her for a little longer, but you can head back to your room. Uh, uh, mm. Amine's response seems oddly hesitant. W what's wrong? <laughs> don't eat! Don't give me that fucking face! Yes? <laughs> Don't do her. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> the hell? だからさ、<laughs> Tip your wick! <laughs> my face falls into my palm, yup! For some reason, I find myself recalling a gag brain graph website. Sk Sa almost said Skagi. Sachi showed me once. Just by entering someone's name, you you'd get a brain-shaped pie chart breaking down the composition of their thoughts. I didn't think to try Omni at the time, but I think hers would be divided right in half, right down the middle. One side would be folksy grandma wisdom, and the other, as always, would probably go without saying, without be, w would be branded with the word dicks. Yup. <laughs> you think I'm going to start making babies like a rabbit the moment someone leaves me in a cage with a female? Ugh. Tell me, woman. Does this scenario play out frequently inside that filthy mind of yours? Plus, she's asleep and sick. I have some decency. It's still not entirely clear for to me what Omne is so worried about, but I find it extremely unpleasant to have such aspirations cast on my character. Uh, you know, not a bad idea, come to think of it. What? <laughs> <sighs> Just remembered something I read in a book discussing novel varieties of sexual intercourse. It seems a slight fever actually increases the natural heat of the genitalia, sometimes leading to greater pleasure for both partners. <laughs> she just... Whoa! <laughs> Alright then, might as well put that to the test. It's not like you'd actually catch fever intentionally, and I'll admit to being highly curious as a man. I'm sure Skaki will understand. <laughs> a little experimentation like this can only enrich your, your life, right? She might end up thanking me for her, her expanding her horizons. <laughs> oh. The thought hadn't even occurred to me. But thanks to the, from the tip from my sexually savvy friend Amine, a whoa, new world of possibility awaits. Life is always overflowing with chances to explore the wonders of the unknown. I'm deeply impressed by your ability to keep that in mind, even at a time like this. Thanks, Amine. Amine? <laughs> oh. Amine stares back at me with blank eyes of a broken electronic toy. Smiling brightly, I give her a friendly thump on the shoulder. It it was a, it was a joke. <laughs> Ow! Motherfucker! Amine's karate chop lands a critical smack in the middle of my wary head. From outside, an owl hoots in mournful commiseration. She's gonna be fucking fine. Stop worrying about it. I said I understand, didn't I? Come on, get lost already. I'm gonna backs out slowly out of the room, staring at me reproachfully all, all the way. I, I I can imagine that actually like as a an, as animated too. I was only teasing her a little in retaliation for slandering me, but it seems I've ended up deepening her unfounded uh, suspicions. Probably best to consider the possibility she might try some half-assed wiretapping outside the door. Shaking my head, I return to Skaki's side. 
Her breathing's coming regularly, a little more quietly than before. She doesn't seem to have noticed the commotion in the slightest. <laughs> well, that's definitely for the best. Well, I said all that in front of her. <laughs> Borrowing the chair from Skaki's desk, I ease myself down and look at her at closer range. Come to think of it, this is the first time I've seen her sleeping. This girl really does have a pretty face. She's constantly forcing it into a scowl, so it's not easy to notice at times, but Sakaki Yumiko is definitely what you'd call a beauty. Right now, that face is relaxed, her eyes shut, her cheeks slightly flushed. Sakaki looks very calm and peaceful at the moment, but much of her life has been an emotional roller coaster of loneliness, hope, and anger. Now that I know the whole story, her usual prickly attitude is all too understandable. Rest easy, all right? I'll protect you. I lightly reached down to put my hand on her forehead, currently covered in a damp towel. The moisture against my palm is slightly warm from the repeat of, the fe of her fever. Oh, It's okay. She's got Yuji ever- Yuji can solve anything! He can solve any issue! And make you feel good about yourself! Son of a bitch. When the whole... <laughs> when I was like, just hurl a knife at her. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. I just... I was just saying a joke. I know it's pretty fucked up to joke about that, but in the context of an of just fictional characters, you know. It's, but come on. She actually did it. Well, she didn't hurl it at her, but... She stabbed her. <laughs> sliced her fucking hand, I assume. Yeah, that's, well, I said, I assume she did say her hand was covered in red, so. But that, is that enough to make you pass out? Then again, she probably went, whoosh, like really hard. And if you're not expecting that sort of thing, you're kind of just, I guess it's more from shock rather than the, oh my god. <laughs> Yumiko, you just, <laughs> everything's gonna be okay. Everything's gonna be okay, Yumiko. Uh, 